The peace of the Lord be with you, and good evening. This is our devotion for Monday, September 11th, and uh, our, our gospel lesson for this coming weekend is, I, I think, a well-known parable. Uh, it's one that, that always sticks in my head, and that's the uh, the parable of the unforgiving servant. Uh, it's one of my, it is probably one of my favorite parables, too. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to hear, but also... Uh, but also wonderful to hear. So we will uh, we'll be looking at that today and, uh, and and reconnecting to it throughout the week. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. We'll follow the early evening order, page 297 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of, your hand, of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. All right. Matthew 18, beginning at verse 21. Then Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven, excuse me, seventy times seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be com compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, his master uh, ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave the debt. And when the same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, and in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debts. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, you have paid uh, uh, in your life, your death, and your resurrection the cost of our sin, which is a debt uh, that we could never pay. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with us, uh, that you would guard and keep us in, in that love, in that mercy, that in all things we would, um, we would show that same mercy and forgiveness and, and, and caring to to those around us, and we pray that you would bless us with, with forgiving hearts, remembering always that you have forgiven us, that we would that we would live in the midst of that, in the joy of that forgiveness, even to see you face to face as you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, so, um, so I, well, I think, you know, I think, like I said, this is a parable that, that, we, that, we, that we know know pretty well. Um, and of course, the point of the parable is summed up as it often is at the conclusion of it, right? So, so my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Uh, which, of course, you know, I think as we think about this, as we think about the uh, the Lord's prayer, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Um, I think I think the question that always comes to the fore with that is, um, so then does does our forgiveness somehow earn? Our forgiveness, right? Does our forgiveness of other people somehow earn our forgiveness of um, from God? And and of course, um, it can sound like that. Forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us, right? Or if you do not forgive your brother, then you will not be forgiven. And and I think that this is um, well. On the one hand, it's obviously law, right? It's not gospel. <laughs> um, uh, interestingly, as Luther treats that 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 phrase in the. Um, in the Lord's Prayer, he does kind of say, "Well, you, but you can take some assurance from it. Like if you know that you're not holding anything against anybody, you can you can take assurance that uh, that God has forgiven you to to an extent, right? But um, but but the 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 pattern that we see in this parable, as I was reading the commentary and I made this point, and I think it's really helpful. The pattern that we see in this parable points us to the direction this has to go, right? This it isn't that our uh, that our forgiveness earns uh, our forgiveness of other people earns our forgiveness before God. 
it's it's look at look at how this happens in the parable. You have you have the man who who uh, who owes this incredible debt, right? And 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 it, and it, it is it's 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 huge. You, you you how could how could the man even even incur that much debt, right? Why would the guy keep lending to him? That's so so it's ten thousand talents. And of course, I mean, as I say that that probably doesn't mean anything, right? But um, but the, the the notes are helpful if you have an ESV. It's got the notes there. Uh, it's helpful. It says, a talent was a monetary unit worth about 20 years wages for a laborer. So 10,000 times 20, well, that's 200,000 years, right? Now, the commentary I read said something uh, like uh, 60 million days or something like that. Well, I guess it'd be about that, wouldn't it? So uh, think about that, 60 million days worth of work. Um, yeah, that's that's nearly infinite, right? That's a lot of days, two hundred thousand years. So, um, so it's obvious that this is to to uh, yeah. Well, how do you, how do you how do you come up with that, right? I mean, how do you how do you how do you pay that back? So so you know, it's obvious that this is to to make the point that um, you know as as we as we play this parable out, and the understanding is that we are. That servant who's been forgiven the the, the huge debt, the, the the massive debt. We've been forgiven this two hundred thousand year, this sixty million day debt. And so, how do we how do we approach life in view of that, right? And and that's and that and that becomes really important. Um, first of all, it becomes important just how and how we live in general. But as we're wrestling with this question of forgiveness, which as as Peter comes to Jesus, right? That's the that's the whole point. How, how many times do I forgive? And 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 Peter, as he asks this, it's not um, seven times. Isn't shouldn't just be like. Uh, on the one hand, you can understand that he's 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 wanting to say, okay, here's the third time, here's the fourth time, here's the fifth time. Uh, but but the fact that he says seven is is pertinent because that's a divine number. So he's he he's trying to connect it to the divine. Uh, so and and maybe maybe even the, the rabbis at some point said that. Let me see here what the note says. Uh, Peter probably regarded his suggestion as quite lenient, since some rabbis taught that one needed to forgive the same sin only three times, another divine number, right? So you get some of the rabbis that are saying only three. Well, so I'm looking looking at seven, and 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 the Lord says no, um, seventy times seven. Right, and the Greek isn't totally clear on this. Is it seventy? Is it seventy times seven? Is it seventy-seven times? Um, it's it's not it's not totally clear. But but you know the point is either way. So if it's seventy-seven times, the point isn't you know. Uh, sorry, I dropped my pen. <laughs> the point isn't you know checking it off. Okay, here's number seventy-seven. I'm done forgiving you. And if it's seventy times seven, it's not four hundred ninety times. And here's your your four hundred eighty ninth. You know. No, the point is that our debt is so huge before God. That this other debt that the other people owe us pales nearly infinitely in comparison, right? Because the debt that, that the other person owes him is 100 denarii. Now, a denarius is a day's work. So 100 is like, you know, almost four months. It's a little over three months, right? Three months, 10 days, whatever. It, yeah. So let's say you earn $100,000. That's, you know, like $40,000, right? Well, it'd be not even. Yeah, I'm talking about a year, right? And not even forty thousand dollars, thirty-five thousand dollars, or whatever. You know, compared to that same number of you know sixty million days, right? So, the obvious point here is that God has forgiven us so much that that is what what informs how we deal with others. And and when we don't deal with others in that same fashion then it's a reflection that, that that mercy of God isn't something that we really trust in. That we really trust that He is the one who will make us whole. That He is the one whom we have offended far beyond when anybody could ever offend us. You know, And that's that people can really offend us. They can really hurt us. Abuse is really harmful. You know, if somebody harms me or my loved ones, that's, that's really harmful. But my harm against God is that much more. And yet He poured all of that debt on the cross of Christ for me. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, we continue with, uh, with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.